So here's my finished snowflake. It's got lots of layers on it. One issue with using this method to finish it, if I want to go back and edit my original unit, let's say I don't like the way the colors are looking, or you know I want to go in and, and uh, add some more colors, or make any kind of edit at all, I have to do the final all over again. I have to repeat the unit, reflect it, and uh, duplicate the layers to get all six parts of the snowflake. There's a way around this, and that is to use a smart object for the unit. So that's what we're going to do in this lesson. I'm going to use this file as my starting point. So I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to give it another name. I'm going to call it um, PS unit, and I'll call it SO for smart object. Okay, and I will save it and click OK. So I'm going to make some modifications to this file. I actually have to go backwards. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all three of these layers. I'm just going to hold down my shift key, click on the bottom most layer, and it will select all of the layers in between. In this case, it's just units three and four. So if I shift click, it will select everything in between where I shift click from whatever I've clicked on first uh, to whatever I shift click on second. If I command click, it will actually be able, let me select or deselect layers out of sequence. So for example, if I command click on artwork two, layers, levels one is still selected. And I'm gonna command click on that because I just want these three. Okay, so let me hit my delete icon, the trash can, and it's gonna ask me if I'm sure, and I'm gonna say yes, I'm sure. And that's gonna bring me back to where I started with just this one segment, and it's called artwork two. This is now going to be the basis as a smart object for my finished snowflake. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to do another save as, and I'm going to strip this back even a little bit more. Okay, uh, file save as, and I'm going to call it PS final SO for smart object and save it and click OK. And I'm going to delete this layer too, this artwork two layer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of everything but that segment layer. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just going backwards. So I could have created a new file, uh, put the black square in the center, and created this guideline for the placement of the segment. But since I already had that there, I just saved as to get us back to this point. So I'm going to go back to my layers panel and create a new layer and I'm going to call it artwork. And I'm going to save this file. And what I'm going to do next is go to my file menu and drag down to place. And I'm going to navigate to the file Snowflake PS unit SO for smart object. That's I should actually rename this segment because there's only one part. There's not both segments comprising the unit, but you get the idea. So when I click place, Photoshop will bring it into this new file and it will put it on what was the artwork layer, which is what I had selected. Notice that it's not called artwork anymore. It's named with the name of the file that I just placed. And you'll notice that it's selected with the bounding box. It's ready to free transform. Well, I don't want to transform anything yet. I'm just going to double click it. And take a look at the icon here in my layers panel. You notice that it looks a little different. Well, that indicates that it is a smart object. It is the smart object thumbnail. What a smart object is, essentially it's a preview of the original file. It works exactly the same as a link does in Illustrator and InDesign in the sense that it's stored somewhere uh, it is a separate file, but it's placed in the other one. Well, so now if I want to make an edit to this, I can double click on the icon and Photoshop's going to give me a warning and it's going to tell me exactly what to do. After editing the contents, choose file save to commit to the changes. Those changes will be reflected upon returning to this file. Uh, I'm going to click OK and it's going to bring up, you can see here, that original file which has all of the layer information in it. So if I go back to my work in progress you notice that the layers are different. So I'm just clicking on the tabs of the document. So they look the same of course because they are the same at this point. 
So let me go back to my uh, work in progress here because what I want to do is I want to duplicate this layer that has the smart object on it. So I'm just going to drag it over the make new icon. Uh, actually, I don't even have to hold down option like I did in the previous lesson. I kind of do that by habit. Um, now that I have the copy, I can click on it. And I could even rename it. It's a unit. I call it, we'll call it segment 2 free transform, so command T, and if I right click on it, I can drag down to flip horizontal. And I now have my segment. Well, where is the one on the right? What happened to it? Well, the problem is that this file still has the black background on it, and it's basically blocking out what is underneath it, which is the original file. So here's now the beauty of it being a smart object. I can double click on the thumbnail to open up the original file. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my background layer and I'm going to hide it. So it kind of looks like there's nothing there, but if you look closely, you can see there's a little bit of blue because it's white on the transparent background. And I'm going to save this. And now when I go back, to my work in progress, take a look at what just happened. I now have both the left and the right segment. Well, why is this white piece here? Well, again, I have that layer that I used just to make sure it was in the same position, almost that template layer of the pie piece. So when I hide that, there's my first unit. So I now have a file that is editable that I'm going to use to create the rest of this snowflake. And I'm going to do it very simply by selecting both of those layers. So I'll control click on it. And what I can do, I'm going to tear my layers panel off again. If I go to my panel menu is I can link these layers. Meaning if I click on one to move it or transform it, both of them will move together. So I'm going to undo that because I don't want to move it. It's almost like grouping, grouping objects in Illustrator or in InDesign. And I'm going to switch to my marquee tool and command T for free transform. And I want to go up to my reference point here in my options panel. And I want to make sure it's the center bottom reference point. That's the point around which I want all the action to happen. Now I'm going to right click on these two linked layers, which are copies of the first, and I will flip horizontal and then flip vertical. In this case, it was symmetrical, so I really didn't have to flip it horizontal and vertically. If, if you watch any of the previous lessons, you saw that the unit was actually asymmetrical. It was different on the left and the right. So in this case, I didn't have to, but I put the extra step in just because I did it on the other. So I'm going to double click to apply the transformation and I'm going to do the same steps again. I'm going to click on all four of these layers and I will duplicate them. I am going to command T for free transform. Make sure my reference point is in the center and I'm going to rotate everything minus 60 or plus 60. Again, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to double click. Lastly, I'll make another duplicate. Free transform. And again, minus 60. Oh, I think I forgot a zero there. Minus 60. And there is my finished snowflake. Again, I'll double click to apply the transformation. I want to save this. Again, if I go back to my original file. So if I double click on the smart object thumbnail, click OK. And I decide I want to continue working. So let me turn the background on just so I can see what I'm doing here. And I zoom in. And let's say I want to go back and I want to add some more white to this. And I'm going to cancel. So I'll click on my brush tool. And I'll make sure that my foreground color is white. And I can go in and I can start painting again. So let's say I'm going to do this. I'm going to uh, I'm make it a little obvious. So let me just make this right side of the segment mostly white. And if I switch my colors, I 
can now make the left side mostly color. And I'm going to save this. And so it's going to update my smart object. And it's going to take a while. Now the one thing that's going to get me into trouble is if I don't hide this background again. So let me hide that. And I want to make sure that I save this. And so now when I go back to my finish, once it's done updating, my edits have taken place. So I now have the same result. I have the finished snowflake, but by using smart objects, I can go in and I can edit the segment or the unit if that's the way I decided to do it. And I don't have to repeat the steps of making all six segments again. It's already in place. I just have to edit the contents.